In this video, we'll be examining the history of Porkopolis, a nickname of Cincinnati in the 19th century that referenced its role as a major American pork production center. Hogs were introduced to the Americas by the Spanish in the early 16th century. Hogs are omnivores, and they used to run free on family farms, scavenging for roots, vegetables, grasses, nuts, and even small mammals and birds. Hogs were the most important meat source for Americans from the colonial era until into the 20th century. The principal reason for Cincinnati's emergence as a major pork center was its proximity to the Ohio River. The Ohio connected Cincinnati to eastern markets and it also served as a gateway to New Orleans via the Mississippi River. The map on this slide dates from 1819 when the human population of Cincinnati was about 9,000 residents. The image on this slide is an illustration from 1860 and it depicts hog farmers herding swine through the streets of Cincinnati. The noise, the stench, and the excrement of hogs were sources of frequent complaints of Cincinnati citizens in the 19th century. But the sheer volume of the pork industry meant that these complaints were largely ignored by city leaders. By the early 1820s, uh, 150,000 hogs per year were slaughtered in Cincinnati. Cincinnati gradually earned the nickname of Porkopolis due to the tens of thousands of hogs and pigs at any one time herded through the city streets on their way to the slaughterhouses. On any given day, there could be far more hogs than people in Cincinnati. Cincinnati's first meatpacking plant opened in 1818, and the city dominated the American pork packing industry until the Civil War and continued to be a major player into the 20th century. In 1844, Cincinnati had uh, 26 packing houses, and that number jumped to 42 packing houses by 1854. I should add, though, that only those in the top third of these groups uh, might be considered large-scale operations. There were a number of smaller-scale uh, pork producers. By 1850, over 400,000 hogs were slaughtered each year in the Cincinnati area. Hogs were typically slaughtered in the fall and winter due to the lack of refrigeration at the time. Winter became the natural refrigeration, thus meatpacking was seasonal until refrigeration developed after the Civil War. Hogs were cleaned, gutted, cooled, cut up, salted, and then soaked in brine or vinegar. The entrails of the hogs were typically dumped directly into the Ohio River. Cincinnati was noted for the development of a number of assembly line type slaughtering and packing facilities. This slide, this illustration on this slide shows the hogs being killed at a Cincinnati packing house. Typically their throats were first cut and then they were hung to dry to bleed out. Uh, one pork producer in Cincinnati had 10 packing houses and uh, each of which could kill and dress a single hog in less than a minute and each of which could process up to 800 hogs per day. After killing the hogs, the next stage was carving up the carcasses into sections, which you can see on this slide. The stage after this was the production of lard, which is made by the process of rendering, as you can see exhibited on this image. This is accomplished by heating chunks of fat in large vats over a fire until the fat is condensed to hot grease that solidifies when it is cooled. Lard would then be stored in tins. Uh, typically these were five gallon tins um, for shipment to consumers. Salting was the last stage in pork production, the salting and curing process that you can see here. Salt was used to preserve the meat in this era prior to refrigeration. It also, of course, provides taste. Uh, the addition of salt to meat draws water out of the cell membranes of microorganisms, preventing their growth. By the 1870s, the pork industry was Cincinnati's largest employer. Nearly 10,000 workers employed in the pork production business. Pork products were exported uh, via the Mississippi River to the Caribbean, then off to markets in uh, Asia and especially to Europe. 
By the 1870s, uh, pork exports represented about 10% of uh, U.S. export commodities. A number of factors led to the eventual decline of Cincinnati as the leading pork production center of the United States. Railroads initially boosted the growth of Cincinnati's pork industry, helping packers get meat to markets faster. At the same time, though, railroads allowed new centers of meat packing to emerge in cities like Chicago and Kansas City. The development of mechanical refrigeration in the 1870s and 1880s meant that packing facilities no longer needed to be located near major transportation routes such as the Ohio River, uh, thus taking away a principal advantage possessed by Cincinnati. Yet uh, the decline of Porkopolis uh, represented a shift, though, for Cincinnati to new industries rather than uh, overall economic decline. Pork, Porkopolis may have declined, but Cincinnati's growth continued. This draws to a close a brief look at the history of Porkopolis.